In this video, I'm going to look at a simulation of random walkers in Wolfram Cloud or Mathematica. Okay, so I'm starting off. I'm going to have my sample is going to be of 100 walkers, and I've decided to make that sort of a, a variable. So rather than carrying 100 through, so I just set. I called it num and made it uh, 100. Now I need to start my walkers. I'm going to have one dimensional walkers. So each walker is represented by a number and then it's the position of that number on some number line and the, the walker is going to uh, either take a positive step or a negative step. And so I need to start all my walkers at the origin. So I just need a big collection of zeros and that's what's here next. So I used random choice, which is probably overkill, but it has the nice feature that it generates a list. Um, the choices for my list are just zero and I'm making none of them. So I made a list of 100 zeros. I'm going to, uh, with each, I'm going to simulate uh, steps of a walk. In each, uh, I'm going to simulate 50 steps. And at each uh, step, I'm going to measure the, the standard deviation of my distribution of walkers. So, and I'm going to collect that data in something I'm calling spread. So this is going to be the standard deviation. I'll call it roughly the spread as a function of time step. But right now, I'm just initializing uh, an empty list. OK. Now I'm going to do the actual simulating part. So I have a for method. A for method is like a for loop is gives me some kind of iteration. This is set up to do something 50 times. I have a counter. I call that counter T. I am my first argument of the for method is initializing my counter. I'm starting it at one. Um, the second argument is the condition under which I continue to iterate. Uh, that's going to be T less than or equal to 50. And then my third argument is what I'm incrementing by. I'm incrementing by one. So I use the shorthand T plus plus. And then the fourth argument is a set of statements separated by semicolons of what I want to do uh, this 50 times. OK, so I am using random choice again, but this time I have uh, two choices, minus one and one, and I'm getting none of them. I'm getting 100 of them. So this is a list of uh, 100 randomly chosen either minus one or one. I'm doing like a, a vector sum here, or uh, so I'm adding that to walkers and making it the new walkers. So each each walker, I add a, sort of, I don't know, flip a coin and uh, add or subtract one. Okay, now I want to add the results of that step to that that spread variable. And I want for each time step, I want to record the time and the spread. So I'm making so I'm making each for each step, I want a, sort of a time and a spread. So I'm making a, a, a an empty little list here that I called my tuple. I'm adding the time to it, and I'm adding the standard deviation of my walkers. Mathematica being Mathematica, it wants to calculate the standard deviation uh, exactly with some numerator, denominator, and square root. I didn't want that. I just wanted uh, it numerically. So I took the I took the standard deviation of my Walker distribution, and then I got the uh, numerical with sort of four significant digits, and I added that to my tuple. So I have for I have the time of the step, the spread of the step, and then I added to my spread list that tuple I just made. Here's the end of the for loop, and then I printed it out. 
So this is a previous result. I'll get a different result because it's random after all. And here is here is my result. So I have uh, 50 of these uh, pairs, the time and the spread. And the spread, an individual walker can be positive or negative. And on average, the walker position is zero, but it on average spreads out. OK, so now I'm going to plot how this spread uh, varies in time. And so I'm using, uh, I have a list, spread was a list, so I'm using a list plot and I'm giving it a title and axis labels. Oops. So here is my time step and, and standard deviation. Those are my axis labels. Here is my title. And there is my data plotted as a list plot. Now, this behavior we know from theory is supposed to be a uh, square root or some kind of power law. So I'm just defining here a little simple fit function that is a power law in A and a coefficient out front, a power B and some variable X. So I've defined that function. There's no out when I define a function. I have the little uh, underscore or strokes and I have the colon equal. Okay. I'm going to spread is my list of data. I'm going to fit it. Uh, I'm going to use find fit to fit the data to this power law form. I'm going to give um, some starter. Now I know that it's supposed to be a half by theory, but I didn't want to put it at that half, but I can see at least that it's sort of below linear. So I made it 0.75, just some starting point for the, the find fit algorithm to uh, converge. And then I just made a out front the coefficient some number. I just chose fairly randomly two. So that is, so I'm going to get, and then I named it. So I'm going to get fit parameters A and B, and then I named that results uh, params. Okay, now I'm going to take my sort of generic form with A and B and substitute in these specific parameters that I found. And that is this, this, slash dot that is uh, a substitution. So I'm substituting in this list of A and B results into the power fit, which had an A and a B. And then there is my specific fit for this specific data. And now I'm going to plot that. So I'm going to use, now this is a mathematical function, so I use plot it's, I put in A and B, so all it has is X, and I'm going to vary X, and I did 50 steps in my simulation, so 0 to 50. Okay, and then I, and again, I named that, so I named the list plot, and I named the, the mathematical plot of the fit, and now I want to put them together so that I'm using show, and I'm showing, this is when I list plot and labeled uh, and gave the title and this is the mathematical fit of that power law which was close to a half but not quite and then i am adding a display of the equation that is this epilogue i'm doing an inset my fit was again that that power law fit with the specific numbers uh, substituted in and then I decide where I want to place it on my graph. So I'm placing it at uh, an X of about 35 and a Y of about two. And this, that one you see right now is a previous result. The numbers are going to change because it's a, a different run of the simulation. Okay. And so there uh, we see now if I wanted to uh, convince you that this indeed was uh, theoretically a power, then I would want more samples. 
and I would also want maybe to run it for a longer time. But this was just sort of some fun playing with a mathematical Wolfram cloud and just seeing what it can do for a relatively short um, notebook here. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.